Hello, everybody. Let me make sure. I think I need to turn this music down a little bit. One second, please. All right. Let me check that real quick. Oh. Ouch. Alright, hopefully that sounds a little bit better. <laughs> that was blasting my ears. Oh, is the DD Beyond working? Yeah, I know. I heard that too. Let me let me make sure. Let me get the audio right real quick, everybody. little bit better, still not great. Um, let me try one more thing. Oh, you know what I think it is? Yes. Uh, there we go. Is that better? <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Kind of. All right. Um, yeah, so I've got... Um, I don't want to spoil too much for this coming Saturday's uh, new series called Shitty Cowboys, um, but I've got something where I had my mic going through something else. Um, and I forgot to turn that off before, so I'm glad that I now know that I had to tweak that a little bit before, um, before this Saturday when I start that. So welcome everybody to Solo Rolling. Uh, this is actually a pretty cool episode because it is the, uh, part three of the Shipwrecked series right there. You see the title above me. You see this amazing cover. Uh, it's Shipwrecked by, um, uh, Blaze Wigglesworth. And the cool thing about this episode is that this is the finale to this trilogy. So, if you've been following along, I've been playing a um, Tempest Cleric, and I am a Tortle. I was a deep, deep sea fisherman, got stranded on an island, um, found... Uh, this uh, woman that was kind of helping me but said she wouldn't help me fight found out that there was some like evil over this kind of island chain in this area and I've been going around trying to stop that so the last episode uh, the first one I did die that's on me I was level one though however so I think I did pretty well for a level one I think I held on okay um, second one did much better with the help of you all in chat. Uh, was able to survive that one without any cheating at all. Um, and then the, uh, the, how it ended was I got to this temple. There were three doors I needed to go through to get keys, got all the keys, went in, fought the big bad. I actually killed it in one hit because I got the keys and it, uh, weakened the thing. After doing that, headed out to the boat with the um, I forget what she is called um, hmm, they're not mermaids uh, but it's some D&D &D thing kind of similar to mermaids uh, as far as I know they don't have fish tails but they're like protectors of the seas um, and there's a coven of them and uh, they all thanked me I'm on a boat I'm heading off to resupply at a different port somewhere, and that's where we left off. And uh, we're pretty much going to kill the big boss, the big bad guy in this area. There is some evil something uh, wreaking havoc in this area. So, without further ado, let's go kill some people. Um, did you guys say that the D&D Beyond... Uh, thing is working I'm not seeing it but I don't know how to see it but if it is working that's awesome 
There should be a little button on your guys' screen where you guys could click on it and it will pull up my character sheet. So, here we go. Oh no. Shipwrecked Part 3, Attack on the Sunken Citadel. Elegant carbon wooden beams support the impressively large thatched roof high overhead. The scent of beautifully prepared dishes wafts through the grand room as an embassy of the island council leads you and Elysia to places of honor within the chamber. Representatives of many of the small islands have come to the feast to celebrate your recent victory, but also to make plans for the final attack upon the Shahir. So the Shahir is the bad guy. Or bad day. Um, each of the uh, dignitaries stops by you to thank, uh, thank you and Elysia for your efforts against the evil tyranny before they make their way to their own seats and join in the feast. After a joyous meal, you uh, join the island Island's elders who gather at a large campfire on the beach, sitting on the sand, you all discuss what is known about the evil Shahir. Elysia keeps a uh, keen mind, absorbs the details of each story until the last uh, she speaks. The power of the Shahir is diminished but not broken. Even as we sit in the council, undead creatures rise from the scene set foot upon your islands. Their numbers are reduced, but they still pose a danger to the common folk. It's time for action. I ask humbly that you send my friend, the Chosen One of Fate, to face the Shahir. Well, I mean, I don't need to go fight this thing by myself, I don't think. Uh, let Fate's uh, will be done and bring an end to his evil. Clapping and nodding in agreement. The, oh, cool. Everyone's really on the side of sending me to almost certain doom. Uh, the effect is both humbling and daunting. Extending her open hands towards you as, ple as though pleading, a gray-haired woman uh, with a deeply wrinkled face speaks as the crowd grows silent. Tell us everything you know of this fiend's hiding places so that we may be of aid to you. Taking the woman's hands, uh, Elysia looks into her shimmering eyes before addressing the assembly. We will share what little we know. Have no fear. With your aid and support, the Shahir will be brought low. Yeah, um, uh, I agree, Danny. They seem very confident in me, a level three. Oh, man, this is a lot of reading in this one. Mm. Woo, here we go. Elysia looks expectantly at you as you quickly dig into your satchel and produce the map you took from the island of the Shahir. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I got a map, so that's good. Um, yeah, I don't know about this Elysia person either still. Elysia takes, I, I even don't know if I'm pronouncing the name right, I don't think I am, but I've done it for three episodes so far, so I'm going to stick with it. Elysia takes it from you and presents it to the aged matriarch who, in turn, hands the map to another member of the council. In time, the map moves from hand to hand around the campfire until it returns to you. Each of the elders note the eerie symbols on the map, debating their meeting and location until a consensus is reached. Look at the, uh, look at the ring-shaped island. Uh, one of these days, I'll try to do voices. I used to do voices when I was reading these things back when I used to do these things. Um, but I think I've just been nervous, maybe. Uh, look at the ring-shaped island, the one marked with an eight-pointed black star, the old woman says. We all agree this is the most likely home of the Shahir, but her voice trails off as her confidence fades. But what, my friend, Elysia asks and then looks to the crowd for answers. This time, a middle-aged man addresses the assembly, assembled elders. Folding his arms and leaning nearer the fire, he stares into the flames and begins his account. Oh, this is dramatic. I like it. The island of the Black Star is more like an atoll than anything else. Yet even that description fails to capture its essence. Once it was an island, and that... At its center stood a magical tower, black stone shaped like an eight-pointed star. Powerful necromancers undertook their evil cons counsels within that tower. It came to pass that the gods had 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 enough of their uh, these evil wizards, wizards, so they shook this island, causing the center to sink straight down to the bottom of the sea, leaving only a ring of islands in its wake. Indeed, if you were to sail past it, you would think a little more than a circle, circlet of land surrounding a dark blue lagoon. But it is said the evil tower still stands beneath 
the waves. This is why we are hesitant to speak what we know. How can the Shahir live beneath the sea? Is it a riddle with no answers? And yet we are certain that this island is his home. The symbols upon the map make it clear to us. There usually isn't this much reading in this one. Woo! I mean, on one page, that is. Nodding in agreement, the wrinkled matriarch, uh, ma matriarch looks to the crowd as though seeking a uh, license to continue. Each of the council members uh, nod and bid her to speak as she reaches into the cloak. A moment later, she holds up a small wooden box. Perhaps it is fate, as Elysia says, that has brought you here. Within this box is all magical treasure we have laid up over the years. Oh, I like this. If indeed it is your fate to venture beneath the waves, then uh, what you uh, find within will aid you in your task. She places the box into your hands. You open it, revealing two magnificent rings. One is silver. I don't know why the word silver... Oh, you guys can't see this word. I don't know why the word silver is a hyperlink. Oh, I guess it will take me to the end of the page for like stat blocks for him maybe that's cool uh, one is silver decorated with a blue stone surrounded by stylized waves the other is gold with a fiery red gem uh, you will be able to swim with great speed wearing the silver ring as for the golden one uh, it ex uh, exudes light and powerful magic learning the secret of these rings wield them wisely let me get caught up on this chat real quick um yeah, I know. I'm really happy for these presents. I'm actually kind of glad one of them doesn't give me water breathing because I'm a freaking turtle. So I don't need no water breathing. Well, I guess I do. I need my water breathing. Um, I like that I can swim fast too now. Okay. Among the dozen or so counselors, uh, also thank you, Randall. Um, among the dozen or so counselors, another woman uh, perks up on the elder's words uh, and gives voice to her confusion. Swimming across the water is not what is needed, but breathing beneath it has their... How can anybody, even this hero, hope to survive beneath the waves? Because I'm a fucking turtle! Uh, smiling uh, coyly, Elysia replies with a playful laugh. Oh, you can leave that to me, giving me a wink and continues. Uh, my people can bestow water breathing upon any land dweller. This is a union with the mighty gifts of your people shall be enough to allow the chosen one to succeed under the seal. I don't even need it. Don't even give it to me. I'm a, I'm a motherfucking turtle. Uh, nodding in recognition of the Elysia, the elderly woman who gave you the box takes a moment to explain the ring's functions as you place each ring on um, your hands. After this, all the council members stand before leaving. Each of them uh, looks into your eyes, uttering the maxim, Though you sink beneath the waves, you shall rise again. Uh, when the last of the council women, uh, councilors has said their farewells, you and Elysia are left alone by the fire. Seeing that the flame continues to burn brightly and that the weather is truly serene, uh, serene you lie back in the sand and consider all that has come to pass. A moment later... Elysia falls back and joins you as the two of you stare silently into the starry sky, considering the new and heavy weight of responsibility upon your shoulders. With the coming dawn, you prepare for your journey to the island of the Black Star. As before, Elysia takes care of the food and provisions. It's up to you to buy what equipment might be needed for the upcoming battles. Considering what might be required, you ponder what combat might be beneath the waves. All right. So, oh, I need to make a nature check. Mm, that is in rule 20. Is there is there background noise still for you all? I don't hear it, but that, not, that might just be... I've got to keep it pretty low so that... Okay, I've got to keep it really low for me. I don't hear it, but then it makes it really loud for you all. So, I never know if it's actually still there. All right. Let's do our first roll of the night. That is a 9 plus, if you can see my character sheet. Uh, what was that check again? <laughs> I missed it already. Um, nature check. My nature is a big plus 0. So, I failed that. 
Failure. The Elder explained that with the uh, Aquan Ring of Swimming, your attacks with melee weapons should be just as effective as you were on dry land. Aside from that, you've never heard of any special method for fighting underwater, but you surmised ranged weapons such as arrows, bolts, or spears will uh, likely sleek through the water uh, speedily. Okay. Um, so on this island, I can purchase anything in the player's handbook. Potions of healing, vials of holy, holy water, and flask of alchemist fire. This is where I lean on you all. So just so you all know, I've got my gold marked down now. I've only got 25 gold. Do any of you know anything really cool thing in the player's handbook that I can buy? I, I've got two vials of holy water, so I don't want to buy any of that. Um, oh, whoops. Okay, yeah, so I don't want to buy any of this holy water. Uh, I don't know what I would need alchemist fire for underwater. Um, I can't afford another potion. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jerundu's here. Jerundu, your name is really, really dark. Um, on my chat window, so I couldn't see your your name. I could only see your chat. All right, my confidence is boosted now that I've got Jerundu here helping us too. Um, though to be fair, I did die the one time Jerundu was watching. Not to his fault though. He did try to give me some uh, sage advice, and I just didn't listen. Um, the last time I did think about for a second buying a grappling hook, and then I thought there's no way I would actually need a grappling hook, and then two pages down it says if you bought a grappling hook uh, but they wouldn't make two adventures in a row need grappling hooks right you wouldn't do that but I know and let me I'm, pu I'm pulling it up now uh, sorry I don't have this on the screen anywhere but I'm just gonna pull up the shopping list for like the d, &D 5e official shopping list um, I forget what it's called um, Item list? No, it's like adventuring, adventuring gear. That's what I think it is. Um, yeah, adventuring gear. Okay, cool, got it. Because I'm spending all 25 gold. This is a finale. I doubt that this big evil dude's gonna have like a fucking vending machine in there where I can buy anything from him. Um, so let's see. What can I buy for 25 gold? A vial of acid. I could buy an abacus. Abacus. <laughs> an abacus. Um. I could do some math. Uh, I could buy some beer. Jeremy, you are right. That might be pretty solid advice. Um, I thought that said basketball, uh, but it says basket. Uh, climbing gear. I might have some... Let me see. How much is climbing gear? I could buy some chalk for a copper. Okay, I'm, I'm marking down I've got a piece of chalk. Okay, it was one copper, so get off my butt. I'm not going to break a gold for one copper, but I do have one piece of chalk. Um, a crowbar for two gold? Maybe. I'm buying the grappling hook, because uh, that's only two gold, so I've got 23 gold left. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to be so giddy if uh, I need a grappling hook somewhere in here. Uh, an hourglass... That's 25 gold? I could make an hourglass right now. I'm on a beach. Hunting trap? Maybe. Um. Uh, Alright, I'm going to try to speed this up because I know that me shopping and... Oh, a 10-foot pole. I'm going to get a 10-foot pole for another 5 copper. I don't know where I'm going to carry that, but... A pony? Can I buy a pony? How much is a pony? It's not on here, man. Don't get me excited if I can't buy one. Uh, I don't need a torch because I've got a, a what's it called? A fucking spyglass is a thousand gold. All right, I said I was gonna hurry. I'm gonna buy a shovel for two gold. All right, um, I got rope. Um. All right, all right. What? Okay, now I just want to buy something. Just I'm gonna buy a hunting trap for five gold. 
I wish I could buy a pony. Um, and then I'm gonna buy oh, a ball of bag bear, a bag of ball bearings. Those, those are definitely gonna come in handy. And you know what? I'm gonna get a vial of no, I can't get the vial of acid anymore. I spent too much gold. I'm gonna buy another backpack. Caltrops, can I buy Caltrops? Oh, I can, yes. Bag of Caltrops. Good call, Danny. And then I'm gonna buy another backpack and I'm gonna have one on my front and one on my back of my turtle shell, so. Okay, so guys, this is a pretty successful shopping trip. I got a piece of chalk, a grappling hook, a 10-foot pole, a shovel, a hunting trap, a bag of ball bearings, a Caltrops bag, and then a secondary book bag. Heck yeah. I think I'm ready now. I, if this thing throws something on me that I'm not prepared for, I'm gonna be very upset, but I don't think it will. All right. Gathering your gear into my secondary backpack, you head down towards the hill, uh, toward the berth where your sandbuck rocks upon the waves. Boarding the ship, you mull over the lore you've gathered about the Shahirs uh, in recent days. Shahirs are a sort of warlock bound to creatures from the elemental planes. Such creatures are able to traverse the astral plane and find the raw elements of uh, specific magical spells, allowing them to gather spells the way a chef gathers ingredients. Although component, uh, competent wielders of magic in their own right, Shahiris task their elemental allies to fetch spells of higher power uh, than most warlocks could ever dare dream of. Though such spells require a longer time to cast, a patient Shahir is a potent foe with Powerful magics at their behest. Meditating on this unsettling knowledge, you stow your gear and cast off. Many people gather on shore, waving and wishing you luck. Yeah, if only like one of y'all could come and fight with me, that would be cool. But I guess, no. Um, Elysia smiles confidently at the crowd, waving as the ship leaves port. You smile and wave as well, but the rumors of the Shahir's power haunt you. You can't help but wonder if the faith of these good people has been misplaced. Yeah, I wonder that a lot. <sighs> Approaching the atoll. The yellow lateen sails of your sandbuck billow as the ship skims across the waves. If this were any other day, you'd relish the good weather, if the cloudless sky and the steady wind, yet today... Approaching the island of the Black Star, and uh, the beauty of the day seems to be a tawdry uh, facade concealing the true horror beneath its surface. You can tell it, um, you can see the atoll already. Guys, I have no idea what a, a, an atoll is, by the way. You can see the atoll already. Indeed, it is ring shape of islands with a dark lagoon at its center. Elysia points towards a white spit of sand, saying, uh, Steer for that point. It's as good of a landing as any we've seen. <sighs> Nodding, you slide your uh, uh, callous tans across the tiller and turn to starboard. All the time at sea has finally made a sailor of you. Elysia no longer critiques your every move. Instead of coach, instead um, of coaching your approach, she adeptly, adeptly uh, raises the sails and lowers the anchor. It is time for you to disembark. At least the weather's nice, she jokes as the she lowers the rowboat into the calm water. Remember the last time you made landfall on this vessel? And I nod an acknowledgement at the jest, but can't manage a spy, smile. The hardships ahead weigh heavily on you. Nothing. Noting your mood, Elysia approaches, looks into your eyes, and says, No matter what lingers in that lagoon, remember you are... Uh... Sorry, I heard Discord go off somehow. Did that go off in my earbuds, or is that my phone? <laughs> uh, okay, sorry. Um, no matter what lingers in the lagoon, remember that you are the one fated to defeat it. As long as you cleave to this belief, cling to this, cleave to this belief, uh, all shall end well. And now, are you prepared for my gift, the ability to breathe underwater? Nope. Nope, get it out of here. Not solemnly, you stand still, knowing, uh, not knowing what to expect. Elysia can't help but laugh at your rigid stance. Smiling, she leans in and kisses you gently on the forehead. Immediately, you feel a sense of magic ripple across your senses. 
You are now endowed with water breathing, my friend. For one full day, you can breathe under... For my whole fucking life, I can breathe under water. That's what you mean. Uh, now go, chosen one, and fulfill your fate. Climbing over the side of the boat with your gear, you board the rowboat. I'll be here waiting for news of your victory. Go with blessings of the lore giver. All right. Atoll equals a chain or ring of islands formed of coral. Ooh, that's good to know. All right. Ball of back bearings. <laughs> oh, man, this one has a lot of reading. Gliding onto the atoll, you hear the soothing sound of the rowboat's hull hissing across the sandy beach. Stepping ashore, you tug the little boat securely up on the white sand, then survey the atoll. It is a narrow, circular beach covered in shrubs um, and white sand barely 100 feet in diameter. Within the atoll is a deep, circular lagoon. From where you stand, you see the vague outline of some large, dark shape underwater, but can't make out any details. The only way to get a better view is to submerge. Approaching the lagoon's edge, you ensure your rings are on. It is time to test the gift. Wading into the blue-purple depths, uh, you walk forward with a uh, holy submerge. Instinctively, you hold your breath for as long as possible until finally your lungs feel as if they'll burst. Inhaling deeply is a sens sensation you'll never forget. You feel reborn, a newly made native to this beautiful alien plane. Shaking off the initial shock of inhaling liquid, you force yourself to adapt to your surroundings. A jungle of tall underwater weeds wave through the entirety of the lagoon, making it difficult to find a path forward. Looking at the sun glinting off the surface above, you guess that you are already descended about 20 feet. Uh, I'm going to switch songs real quick, or ambience. Uh, by the way, we're using tabletop audio tonight for this. But there's one. Um, there's actually a couple that I think are going to be better for underwater. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, man, my uh, my turtle's ability to breathe underwater is uh, was wasted. Emerging from the sea jungle, you enter a clearing. The bizarre sight that greets you takes a moment to fully grasp. Before you is a massive tower composed of shining black stone. Swimming upward a bit, you look down on the tower from above and note that it is indeed shaped like an eight-pointed star. Descending again, you come to the tower's top floor, where you see a ten-foot-wide entryway made of broken masonry. Uh, you found your way in. Still, you decide it is worth the effort to investigate the surrounding structure to see if there are any more modes of ingress. Schools of shimmering brightly colored fish swim passively through the water as you plunge downward toward the seafloor, seeking any additional entrances to the citadel. Uh, by your reckoning, you are 65 feet above the surface when you finally below the surface, when you finally reach the sandy bottom of the lagoon, it is time to look carefully for the base of the structure. Alright, uh, I think you all know that I've got a pretty decent perception. Plus three. Oh, what is that? That looks pretty good. It's funny, whenever I click to roll, I can see it on my um, 16. I think that passed. Yes, yeah, success. Circumnavigating the Citadel's base, you are satisfied there's no other way in. As you're about to swim upward, you catch sight of something glimmering in the sand. You spot a rusted iron flask with its lid dangling from a chain. There's writing on its inside. Uh, or side. Brushing the sand from the uh, indentations, you read the incomplete phrase written in common. Off-plane beings be gone to imprison them. Puzzled, you take the flask and swim upward. So I get a note right here. If you all haven't watched any of these before, sometimes there will be something that will say uh, take note. And I add that to my bag uh, or my notepad. And now, later on, it might say like if you've got this, you get to do this. Um, just as you're about to tr ascend, tranquil schools of beautiful fish dart uh, erratically past you. At first, you assume it is your presence that disturbed them, but then suddenly, you get a sinking feeling that there might be something down here far more alarming. No! Alright, another perception check, and I'm sure I just burned my one good one. Yep, 13. 
Shoot. That's a failure. The sandy floor of the lagoon shifts before your eyes as if the seafloor has come to life. You are dumb dumbfounded by the, by the sight. Go to combat tile at one. Alright, so I'm already there in roll 20. As so you all can see. Um, okay, so it's in this corner... Top, top left corner, and I'm right next to it. Whatever. This, a giant octopus. Ooh, baby. Uh, let me go ahead. Oh, you know what? I bet, I bet I could find a giant octopus. Let's see. Octopus. Here we go. There we go. Oh, that's a premium asset. No, I don't know how to get premium assets. Uh, oops. Ah, oh, well, that's not the prettiest, but... Um, and then I am a turtle. Where's my turtles at? Turtle versus octopus. Who shall win? Um, so, rules for underwater combat, yeah, yeah. If you wrote spotter in your journal, you are not surprised. No, I did not write spotter. I wrote unstoppered. That is different. So, I am surprised. Oof. Yeah, it's going to be a well-armed octopus. It's going to have eight guns. Um, shoot. Okay. <laughs> uh, I love doing these because I love the chat speaking of chat I tried to get my chat bot uh, set up before tonight and I just I ran out of time uh, work was crazy today but I want to get my chat bot with some different um, command set up for everybody alright I will roll my initiative first please be good I got a four. Um, it's going to get a plus one, so let's see what it gets. Fourteen, yeah, thought so. Shoot, that means this thing's going to get to go twice before me. Oh, shoot. Okay, well, it's got one disadvantage from Sabai last time. So I think I'm probably going to maybe need to use that at the first go. Let's see what this thing can do. Um, it can only hold its breath for an hour, so if I can just, like, dunk it and, like, stick its head in the sand for an hour and just hang out there, it'll just suffocate. Um, oh, wait, no. Hold breath. Oh, while out of water. <laughs> I was gonna say, I didn't think octopus... Oc yeah, I, I didn't think an octopus would need to go to the shore to catch a breath. Damn, I'm dumb. Um, tentacles. Plus five to hit. Okay, and for ten damage, that's kind of a lot. The dusty old bottle of aspirin from Graham. <laughs> no, Geronda, you missed it. I used that one from the crab fight, but last game I bought two. I used one, so I do still have one potion of healing um, but don't need it yet because as this thing just swirls around its big tendrils at me tentacles at me my big turtle shell plus my shield 19 armor class but that was its surprise round and now it's its regular initiative round so it's going to try to hit me again wow I thought I had a pretty good chance of not getting hit with a 19 AC. Oh, so sad. All right, everybody, do I roll for it or do I take the average? It's either take 10 damage or roll 2d6 plus 3 damage. I don't know which I like more. I kind of want to roll for it, but I bet it's going to be. I bet it's going to be above 10. I bet it's going to be above 10. 7. Nice. Not bad at all. Good call, Danny. Good call. 
All right, I'm down to 20 health out of 27. Um, if you are using the Roll20 d, &D Beyond um, extension and clicking it and seeing my she sheet, let me know if it actually shows my health changing, because that would be pretty cool. Oh! All right, everybody. My turn. We picked up a couple... Oh, no. Real quick. I'm going to use my reaction... I never remember to do this, but I'm going to try tonight. I'm going to use my reaction to make it make a dexterity saving throw of DC 13 or take two lightning damage or half on the success. So it has a plus one dex. And it's saved, of course. But it's still going to take, I'll take half of this. I'll take three points of damage. That's not, that's not super good. That's not very good at all. Uh, it's got 52 health. I mean, 49 health. Jeez, guys, this is going to take me forever to kill this thing. All right, so let me uh, walk you through some of my new spells I've got. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing, unfortunately, that says, like, if they're wet, they take... Um, uh, like more damage or anything. I do think if somebody is submerged in water, they have resistance against fire. Um, but I don't know if it works the other way around. Oh, well, I'll just take three hours to kill this thing. But uh, what I've got now is I picked up... Um, so I've got Shatter from being a Tempest Cleric. Um, I've also got Gust of Wind. I don't think that's going to help much. Oh, I picked up Aid in case I was going to give myself just uh, plus five um, max HP. But I don't know if... Um, that 5 HP is actually going to be helpful for tonight or not. Mm. And then I've also got... A couple other things I got. Uh, now I can, I can do my... Um, uh, what is that called? Channel Divinity. And when I channel Divinity, I can do it once per short rest. We all know that on this, I can do short rest like pretty much whenever I want out of combat. Um, so once per short rest, when I do uh, lightning or thunder damage, instead of rolling for that damage, I can just um, I can just do the max damage. So, how do you all think I can kill this octopus the fastest? I got four first level spell slots, two second level spell slots. I might want to do. <laughs> I might want to do uh, guiding bolt. It's a fun one, um, and I know it's not going to die in one turn, so that would give me advantage on the next attack. So I'm pretty much looking at um, guiding bolt, inflict wounds, hit him with my hammer. Thunder Wave and Shatter. <laughs> That's Justin's go to uh, AFK message whenever he has to leave. He says either his cat's on fire or his kid swallowed a salamander. <laughs> don't don't be worrying about Justin's kid. <laughs> I think I might go with the uh, the chat favorite and just do a uh, guiding bolt or try. Yeah, because then if it hits, I I would like to have that advantage next turn. Okay. Yeah, guiding bolt. Here it goes. It's only got an eleven armor class, and I've got a plus five. Ooh, nice. That looks like pretty good. Eighteen. It only did 11 points of damage to it, but uh, as soon as I, you know, shoot this 
bright ball of light at this thing and light it up. Now, I will have advantage next time at least, so that's good. Oh. Y'all know what I did? I forgot to use that disadvantage when that, um, when that octopus hit me last time and did all that damage to me. Dang it. Oh well. I might need to use it right here because it is now octopus turn. It's got a 1d20 plus 5 to hit me with a tentacle. Alright. This thing, I, I'm feeling pretty good about this thing actually now because it just rolled a 7 to hit me. So again, it's just kind of like slapping at my turtle shell. So the question is... How many spells do I want to save? Um, I'm going to have advantage on attacking it this turn. So maybe I want to use like a actual big damage attack on it to try to do a lot of damage. Save a lot. Yeah, I'm thinking that we're still pretty early on. This is only the first combat. And I know that there are... I'm not supposed to know this, but I know there are four maps, so there might be four different combats, so. Um, I guess I could just do a uh, Sacred Flame on it, but then that wastes my... What's Guiding Bolt say exactly? Um, and the next attack roll made against this target before the end of your next turn has advantage, so I need to attack it with something now to get that advantage. I think I might then run up to it and hit it with my hammer. Oh wait, I've got a crossbow, a cross bolt, light crossbow. Um, yeah, I've never shot my crossbow before. I'm gonna try to shoot it with my crossbow and I've got advantage on it because it's lit up. Did it roll twice? Oh, it's rolling the second time on my screen. The second one was a, a three, so I'll take the first one. I'll take the 15. Is that 10 points of damage? Ooh, that did more damage than my guiding bolt did. No one ever told me that crossbows did so much damage. All right, all right. I'll, uh, I'll uh, try to speed up this combat a little bit because whenever I'm in a just a back and forth like this, I mean, this octopus only has one thing it can do is it can keep just swinging ten tentacle at me. So I'll uh, try to fast track it a little bit. Another whoa! I am gonna use my disadvantage. Yeah, yeah. Haha! Now if he hits me with another one, I'm gonna be really mad. That's right. That's right. Have I ever said how much I like turtles? Um. Now. Um. What do you all think is a better chance? Me to hit an 11 armor class with a plus 4. I kind of like that. I kind of like those odds. Not bad. Or a plus one dex to save against a DC 13 saving throw. I don't know the math on all that. Mm. You all let me know if you want to see Sacred Light Crossbow. Because I think they're both pretty close. Um, crossbow does a little bit more damage. Um, uh, what does loading mean again? Crossbow? Yeah, that that crossbow did do pretty good last time. All right, I'll do the crossbow again. I'm looking up loading real quick. Uh, because of the time required to load this weapon, you can only fire one piece of ammunition from it to uh, when you use an action, bonus action, reaction. Okay, cool. I wanted to make sure that I could use it again back-to-back -back rounds, but it's just that I can only use it once per turn. Okay, that's fine. So I loaded another bolt, and... 
Ooh, did that really do four points of damage? That is a far cry from the ten of the last time. Um, okay, cool. I'm whenever I whenever I play, I don't play a lot of fighters really, like martial classes at all. So a lot of that kind of stuff I always forget. That and I'm usually the DM, so I guess I should know that those rules. But um, all right, that's good to know. Um. Plus, coming up Saturday with our shitty Cowboys show, um, we are going to have a lot of gunslinging rules that we need to uh, get to the bottom of. All right, four points of damage. I said I was going to try to speed this up, and I keep stopping to talk. All right, crossbow. That that wasn't a very good crossbow bolt, so it'll go like right through its one of its tentacles and just knock one off because, fuck it, it's got seven others. It's going to try to attack me, and I don't have any more disadvantages. 17's gonna miss me, so my turtle shell gives me a 17, and I've got a shield, so I will raise my shield up and knock that aside. Um, it's been rolling pretty good, so I'm, a I'm actually gonna try a divine... I'm gonna try a sacred flame. I'm gonna cast sacred flame on this thing's uh, little suckers, and it's gotta try to get out of the way, which it fucking does, so... It's going to try to attack me again. I'm just going to muscle through it. Yeah, that's right. Um, I'm going to shoot with the crossbow again. That was that was more climactic than it just dodging out of the way of that. Let's shoot it. Let's shoot it. Oh, is that a 10? Damn it. Guys, this is, gonna, this is getting drawn out right here. Oh no, it actually hit me! Oh no. Ooh. I'm gonna get got. Look, this thing is about to hit me with the. Oh, fucking eight points of damage. That's a lot for a level three cleric. Whoa. I am below half. <coughs> I've got 12 health out of 27. Oof. This thing still has 24 health. Oh. No, Justin, I'm not going to die. Don't say that, man. Um. <coughs> um. All right. I need to do something. I need to change it up. Because that crossbow I'm losing. I will. I'm going to use a spell slot. I got to use a spell slot. Um, I am going to do, I'm going to do another Guiding Bolt. Whoa! That's what I'm talking about. 20 points of damage. I only hit it by one, um, uh, because it only has 11 armor class. It's down to four HP now, and it's glowing like a, just a huge, big target. So as long as it doesn't hit me right here, I'm going to shoot at my crossbow next because... Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh. 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 So. I got, I got too cocky. Now... Um, shoot. So, I've got 12 HP. I can take the average that this thing does for 10 damage. And I think I'm going to have to do that. Because it can roll 2d6 plus 3. So, if I don't take the average, I could roll and kill myself. So, I think I'm going to <laughs> take the average of 10. And I'm going to have 2 damage. Oh, Drondu. Is that in D and D five E mechanics? If I eat the octopus, do I get stronger? Do I grow uh, six more limbs? I guess I would only need four more, four more limbs. Yeah. Um. All right. I got two HP, you guys. I mean, octopus is only like one level removed from a salamander. So if a salamander gave Justin's kid superpowers, then I'm sure some octopus will give me superpowers also. 
I don't like how close this fight's getting. I thought that I was going to stomp out this stupid fucking octopus, but no, I'm down to 2 HP now. It's only got 4 HP. It is glowing, so I've got advantage. I'm going to shoot it with my crossbow. And if I miss both of them, I swear I quit this stream. <laughs> no, I won't. I won't do that to you all. Okay. And then it, for some reason, the second time I roll it, it always rolls it on my Dindy Beyond instead. Okay, it was only a five. Um. Oh, did it do? Did it? It did my damage too, didn't it? On roll twenty, nine piercing damage right through. Actually, right through its weird little beak mouth thing. Crossbow bolt goes right through it out the back of the head. Let me see if it's gonna give me a second to kind of catch my breath. If you're victorious, go into the tower. Into the tower, defeating the octopus was no easy feat. You decided that the seafloor is more dangerous than it appears. Who knows if there are any other creatures waiting beneath the sand for a meal. Ascending, you approach a 10-foot opening le uh, leading inside. Swimming toward the sunken citadel, you notice a dim blue light emanating outward from the opening. As you take a tentative glance inside, you see four magical blue torches glowing around the edges of the room. In the center of the chamber, you see a large, um, a large three-foot-high octagonal uh, table made of stone. Sheets of paper float around the room, the ink long since washed from their surface. The papers float and twist in the water, giving the room a bizarre appearance and making it difficult to get a view of the entire room. Peering past the swirling parchment, you notice a spiral staircase leading down from the northeast corner. You can't see any movement within the chamber, uh, but the swirling papers make um, any true assessment of the room's contents difficult to ascertain. You, cert you decide it is wise to err on the side of caution and attempt to make a self stealthy entrance. Ooh, so I really thought I was going to go ahead and um, take a rest which usually you can take a short rest between fights, but I don't think it really makes sense here because um, yeah, I think I might have to use a healing. Oh, I got a, I got a health potion too, but I wanted to take a short rest, but I don't think I can. I don't think it really makes sense here. Until I find out what's in this room. And I just glancing at this big sheet of paper right here. I do see just a gigantic um, seahorse skeleton right there. So I'm guessing that's probably in this room. So I'm going to go ahead and down my health potion. So that is uh, 2d4 plus 4, I think it is. Or 2d4 plus 2. Two D four plus two. Let me go and get that healed up. Seven, not bad. Uh, so I'm at nine out of twenty-seven. Um, I guess I'll cast cure wounds on myself. Yeah. Dang, I've only got one first level spell slot left, but I got two second level spell slots. How much did that heal me for? 10? Looks like 10 over there. 10. <sighs> I'm at 19. I guess that's enough. Alright, now let me do my roll to find out how tore up I'm going to get from this thing. Um, what did I need to roll right here? A stealth check. Oh. I don't think I'm super stealthy. Plus two. Is that an 11? 11. Oh, no. That fails. Failure. You swim through the fog of pages, but in route, you kick against the table at the broom center. A loud thud echoes outward, crushing your luck. Cursing your luck, you feel waves of dread flow over you as an otherworldly sonorous moan fills the room. Looking through the storm of paper, you see a terrifying duo. Duo? A giant... 
Oh no, a giant undead seahorse and seated upon it a zombie cavalier. What? Oh no. Oh. Oh shoot. All right. I know we wanted to like save stuff for the boss fight, but Oh no. Oh, I know I'm dead, Justin. I don't Oh no. Oh no, 1v2. Um the room is flooded with water. I did not write stealth. Oh. You know what? <laughs> um I don't think that octopus was supposed to have advantage against me or surprise against me last time, but that's fine. We're past that. I was mostly worried thinking that these two were going to have surprise on me, but it says if I had that note I would have surprise. But since I don't, they don't have surprise on me. So that is really, really good. So, that being said, I will roll my initiative first. I don't know when I'm going to learn to roll somebody else's initiative first because I keep doing very, very bad. Um, this thing has a plus two, so this will be the seahorse. Seahorse is going to beat me. And then this is the zombie. Oh, seahorse, me, zombie. Okay, as long as they're not both going before me. What the fuck can the seahorse do? And it's giant? Fuck, it can charge at me. Justin, which one spits out babies? Oh, I guess it's the mommy. You said, is it a mommy or a daddy? It might spit out babies. Wait, what the fuck? A dad spits out babies? I don't think that's... That doesn't sound right. What? I think you guys are all trolling me. Okay, let me just real, just real quick. Let me just... You know what? I'm actually going to Google it on this page so you guys can see it too. Um... Um, oh, you can't see it all. It says, it sounds crazy, but it's true. Seahorses and their close relatives, the pipefish and the sea dragons are very unusual usual because it's males that get pregnant and give birth to the babies. All right, asked and answered. Oh, land horses too? Daddy land horses spit out dozens of babies. <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay. Uh, so this thing's going to get to charge at me because it's 20 feet away from me, unfortunately. Um, so it's a plus three to hit, which if this hits me, I'm going to eat my fucking shoe. Haha, -ha. good thing I'm not wearing any shoes. Uh, so that was a 12. So it's going to charge at me. <laughs> For some reason, it's making galloping noises. Uh, the zombie on top has got a pair of coconuts. Uh, but it misses me. Which is fan-fucking-tastic. But that means the zombie's also on me. Okay. Mmm... I've got a couple things, everybody. So let me let me get through my let me go through my thoughts, and you all let me know what sounds the best, because I can either I can cast Shatter. They both have to make a Constitution saving throw, and even on a fail, they'll take half, and that will hit both of them. That is a second level spell, however, and I would kind of suck to have to burn that. I can cast Thunder Wave. Same thing, but one less D8. I I don't mind casting that at all. Um, 
I can cast Ward of Radiance. You utter a divine ward and burning radiance erupts from you. Each creature of your choice within my range has to make a con save or take a d6. I know that undeads will have to take double damage because that is radiant damage. And that's a cantrip. So do I try to go slow and do a cantrip for lower damage but double since they're undead? Or do I go for th thunder wave? But thunder wave is thunder damage, so they won't even take more. Um, or if I did, does it do double to undead? Um, so the ward of radiance does radiant damage, and let me. Um, oh no, nope, 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 nope. These aren't. Vulnerable to radiant. Never mind. All right. So I think what I kind of want to do is, um, since I was wrong about that, I kind of want to cast just Thunder Wave, which is a level one spell, and then use my Channel Divinity to max out the damage. So that would be sixteen points of damage. I mean, I could kill, I could kill them both. I could kill them both if they if they both fail their Constitution saving throw, of course. And then I'll get my channel divinity back after I take a short rest. Because I'm going to take a short rest in here. Okay. So I need them to make both make a con save of 13. That's not very high. They both... Oh! The giant seahorse has a plus zero and the zombie has a plus one. This is the uh, zombie. <laughs> Lost by one. Heck yes. <laughs> I am going to erupt with a thunderous wave of energy coming from me. I'm going to burn a point of uh, channel divinity. My only point. I've only got one point of channel divinity right now, which I thought I always got had at least two. But no matter. I'm about to take a short rest. So doing max damage for that. That will be 16 points of damage, and they are both only 16 HP. Wow. But I've only got two second-level spells now. I'm out of first-level spells, so that's really unfortunate. But I'm glad that they did not hit me, because my health is still pretty low. So, um, If you are victorious, go to Something's Amiss. Defeating the zombie cavalry leaves you alone in the large chamber. Just as you're about to head down the spiral, pause. I'm not yet. Um, you get a sense that something isn't right. You can't say exactly what it is, but something here is amiss. You decide to examine the area before leaving. If something else pops out, I, s I, I swear, I will. So I can either make a perception check or an investigation. I think my perception... Yes, I'm going to do perception. It is better. Ooh, what is that? It looks pretty good. 18. Success. Glance around the room, noting that there are seven distinct corners. It seems strange that the corners of this eight-pointed star have been bricked up. In this corner is an old bookcase, uh, perhaps the source of all the strangely uh, durable pages that have been floating around the room. Examining the bookcase closely reveals a hidden lever. Giving it a tug, you see a five-foot opening leading into a small triangular chamber on the other side. If in the... Um, in the floor, you can see another five-foot opening, this one leading to the floor below. Before leaving, you recall another oddity you spotted in the chamber. An unusual object sitting in the center of the table. It is a gold and black metal rhombus about the size of your palm. Sensing it has some significance, you add it to your collection. Take note. Black rhombus. And I'm going down the hidden path, everybody. Heck yes. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good. I've got two notes I haven't used yet. Unstoppered and Black Rhombus that I think they're going to come into play uh, pretty soon. I am going to, before I go down the secret entrance, I'm going to take a short rest. Uh, these modules are cool and they say that anytime you think that you should be able to take a short rest, you can. It says, it says you could even do a long rest if you want, but I think that's getting kind of 
Kind of cheaty. Um, hit dice is 1d8 plus 1. I am going to do two hit dice. Actually, I'm going to... Can I do a hit dice and then decide if I want to take another one? I'll do that. A seven. Um, yeah, that gets me to one point away from full. I'll do that. And I'll stop. I'll save the other two. Cool. And then that also gives me my channel divinity back. All right, everybody, we are doing pretty well. Thanks to you all. So we're going down the hidden path. Oh no, it's got a picture of a shark next to it. Descending through the hole in the floor, you enter a room dominated by two large cages. There are bars reaching from the floor to the ceiling. Rubble from a wall that once stood in the corner of the room provides some cover as you examine the surroundings. You spot a small but deadly looking shark swimming through the chamber. You also see a cloud of blood and a shark tooth fish like humanoid feasting on the corpse of a fish. Ew. Uh, the only way down to the next floor appears to be the spiral staircase in the corner, northern corner of the room, and the only way through is past the two deep sea predators. Take note advantageous position. Oh no. Yeah, I thought I was going to be able to like just go right past these two things, but no. I guess I don't really need to fight them. I, if I can just make it to the... If I can just make it to the thing. Uh, let me get the full-size map up for you all so we can see what we're working with here. Um, so it's got monsters right here and here. I think I might actually need to get some minis up for this one. Okay, um, there are two starting positions in this room, but you must choose the one suited to your previous choices. If you came down the spiral staircase, you are in the blue dot in the northeastern corner. Um, okay, if you came down by the secret door, you're in the southwestern corner, so I'm right here. Okay, if you wrote advantageous position in your journal. The kelp shark cannot make use of his pack tactics, tactics to the shahu again. Okay. Okay. All right, we can do this. Um, let me put some markers because I think this one might actually get to be a little, a little weird. Sharks down here. And then the Shahu again. I'm just gonna put a fish. <laughs> okay. And where am I trying to get? Um I need to go down the north. <sighs> ah shoot. Okay. All right. Oh, I really don't know what I'm going to do for this fight. I guess I'll go ahead and do initiative real quick. Oh, yeah. Can I sneak? What do you all think? You think I should get, like, one chance to try to sneak past them? Because it doesn't say they saw me or anything. I think I should get a little chance to try to... Try to sneak on... From here... I just gotta get to the staircase and go down. I'm not supposed to have that option, but I mean, we do only have an hour and 15 minutes left of the stream, and we saw the boss fight too. So I would like to try to get this one. I wanna, I wanna make sure that we don't leave it hanging. But that being said, if I fail the stealth check, I've got a plus two. I think it was. I literally just looked at it not five minutes ago. Stealth. Here we go. 
Uh, let's say the D... We can set the DC pretty high since I'm not even supposed to be able to do this. We can say that it's 15? We'll say it's a 15 DC for me to stealth down there. Yep, that was a 12. So, I'm going to go ahead and just put me on out in the middle there. Okay. Uh, I'm going to roll my initiative first. 21! Uh, shark gets a plus one. Shahu again gets a plus zero. So shark is... Wow. Whoa. Uh, so shark, it'll go me, shark, and then fish guy. Okay, one second. Need to go grab another Mountain Dew really quick. So, I don't know, I don't really have anything that's like, anti-fish. I don't know if I should be allowed to like, sneak down there? Like, I don't know if, I don't know if like, a shark would be able to, um, go down the staircase. I think the Shahu again could. Well, first I'm going to use all my movement to go on down there. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I can get. It's a little weird because my token's bigger than the squares, but. <sighs> hmm. I think my plan is going to be to kill the fish guy and then bolt down the stairs and just say that the shark can't get me down the stairs. I think that might be fair. And to kill the fish guy... I mean, the fish guy, he's small enough, he's gonna be able to fit down there, so. Shark. I'm picturing kind of a big ish shark, so I don't know if. <sighs> okay. Well, so now how do I kill this thing? Um, I've been liking that crossbow tonight. I'm gonna try again and just shoot this little fish guy with the crossbow. By the way, um. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that's how it would realistically happen saying realistically as I'm a turtle 14 uh, three points of damage oh man um, okay so this thing I'm having trouble finding all my sheets um, 14 hits and it's got 19 points of damage or health now okay and then, uh, that's my turn. That means that this thing's probably gonna creep on up on me, isn't it? Uh, well, it's shark turn first. Shark's got 40 feet speed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight times four, five is, f uh, 40? Yeah, and then, uh, I'll have it dash to me. Which is unfortunate, because that means it's going to get an opportunity to attack. <laughs> I know where all my character sheets are at all times. Uh, and 
And then the Shahu again. Will. Uh, throw a spear at me. Uh, plus three to hit. We can do that. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Ah, oh, ouch. Doesn't do much damage. 2d6 plus one, but still, that sucks. Wow, one, 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 plus one. Three damage, not bad at all, everybody. Yeah, that's about as, as good as you can get, literally. Um, my turn. Mm, I don't like how little damage I do with that crossbow. I've only got two second level spells, though, and I... No, I've got... Yeah. I've got two second level... Sp oh, you know what I'm going to do, though? I'm going to use my reaction... I told you I was trying not to forget this at this time. Uh, I'm going to use my reaction and uh, make it make a DC 13, which it has a plus zero. I know that, so. Um, a two. So it is going to take 2d8 lightning damage. As soon as it hits me, I can use my reaction to shoot lightning back at it. For 12 points of damage. Okay, everybody. All right got seven HP what's the best way for me to do seven HP against it real quick that was really good that was really good it did bad on its roll and five plus seven is not bad at all but now I need to do seven damage to get it killed yeah I think I'm gonna shoot the crossbow and even if it doesn't die I may go ahead and run down the stairs after this turn yeah, let's do the crossbow. I agree. I, I I never really use crossbows a lot, but I mean it's been doing it's been doing pretty well. Cause then I I'll have my two second level spell slots for the boss, and I like that. Did it roll? Twenty two eight. <laughs> it had seven HP and it did eight damage. Heck yes, right through the between the eyes of this little fish man. Um, unfortunately, now I am going to, uh, need to move away from the shark. So the shark is going to get an opportunity attack against me. And that is, bite is plus three. I didn't think the Shahuigan was going to hit me either with the plus three. And it got a nat 20, so let's see. 14. Okay, it nips at the back of my shell as I skedaddle on down there. Uh, preparing for the plunge. So I'm going to go down and just let that shark go over and eat on that uh, Shahu again as much as it wants. The scent of blood in the water does not fade, but at least most of it's not yours. Uh, the corpses of the slain Shahu again uh, float toward the roof of the chamber for a moment. You wonder what evil magics has been cast upon them if you uh, don't finally defeat the Shahir. Uh, before making the final plunge down the northeast staircase, you decide to examine the room for any clues or tool. Well, I'm not really supposed to be doing this, but I'm going to go ahead and do it because I want to see what I get. Uh, I'm supposed to be just hoofing it down the stairs. Twelve. I failed anyway. Search the room. There's nothing of any worth. Okay, that makes sense. I would have been just booking it for the in exit so I wouldn't have found whatever that was oh dang I did just see that it it's 500 gold I guess it doesn't really matter is this the boss though this isn't your ideal place of rest it is likely your last chance to prepare for battle oh I can make a long rest here I should have fucked up that shark with my spells Ugh. oh well I think narratively I think it all makes sense still long rest yes please don't have to tell me twice to take a long rest I don't know why it moved my health down um, okay 
Oh, everybody, we are, we are fucking ready. We're ready. Making your final descent into the room below, you notice the powerful crackling of energy like clouds of lightning sparking through the chamber. At the room center, you see a strange, seemingly two-dimensional, eight-pointed star rota rotating above a black stone globe. Glancing around the room, you see a black stone mo mosaic on the floor of each of the eight points of the room. You suddenly see surveying the room as the sense of being watched washes over you. Directly across the chamber, you see a proud blue-skinned elf sitting upon a throne. Looking up from the uh, metal page tome, the Shahir peers up at you as he stands, raising his hands in a grand gesture as he addresses you in Aquin. So this is the adventurer that has undone so many of my designs. Fool, do you think I waited here uh, impotently for death at your hands? Of the many evil magics at my disposal, the greatest of these I have aligned against you. Now my foolish adversary, you will die and become my eternal servant. Bolts of energy flash from the globe at the center of the room. The magical sparks coalesce, shooting through the water toward the Shahir and covering him in a shimmering white and purple aura. Stunned by the flash, you lose sight of the Shahir. He's gone. Looking around, you see he has appeared in another corner of the room. Then, just as quickly, he vanishes, but no, he's over there in that corner. The Shahir isn't teleporting around the chamber, following no discernible pattern, landing on one of the eight mosaics on the floor as though this were not troubling enough you see a creature emerge from behind the globe it is a small otherworldly being made of steam it laughs tauntingly while it floats before the spinning black star it's time to meet your fate chosen one I'm excited yeah I know that's what I was thinking you look like like somebody from like a failed 80s uh, hair band all right. Oh, everybody, I'm kind of sad. This is like the end of the trilogy right here, one way or another. Oh, yeah, I know. Can I put... I want to put a, a hunting... I want to throw a hunting trap on one of these. Um, so let's see here. The room is flooded with water. Um, yeah, yeah. Magical mosaic... Obviously, the mosaics are something. The center of the room is a globe on a stone stand. So, when am I supposed to use the black rhombus unst and unstoppered? Alright. Um, so, it looks like I am fighting. Uh, I came up from uh, the top middle staircase. And the steam mifit is right in front of me. And the Shahir is on the throne at the other side of me. I guess I'm ready to go ahead and roll everybody's initiative. Twenty-one. Whoa. Mine's been doing pretty well. I'm gonna change this music real quick. See if I can find something a little bit more. Oh yeah, it's on oh, I'm on the wrong one. Uh, yeah, this one should be good. Okay. Plus three and plus zero. So this is the boss right here. Ooh, still behind me, and this is the steam infant. Okay. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a, um... Were you supposed to read something about those things? Like a link? Um, so what it'll say is, it will say, yeah, like right here. So it's af, oh, tactics. Oh, so this is a two pager. Oh, I see. Oh, yes, good call, good call. Um, okay. Yes, yeah, so. Right here it says, if you wrote eight pointed frame, I did not. 
If you wrote unstoppered, I did. You remember the rusty iron flask. You're sure that the steam infant will be swallowed up by this magical device? Speaking the command word as an action, forcing it to succeed a 17 wisdom saving throw. Oh, yes. Cool, I've got that note. I still don't see if you wrote the note, um, Black Rhombus, which I do have that note, but, uh, but oh well. So cool, I can now, I can stop her that as an action. I think I will do that. I want to get that out of there. So the first thing, I don't think I need to read, okay, so for my turn, I'm first, so. I'm going to uncork it, say the command word, and I'm going to try to suck up this steam infant, and it's going to make a DC 17 wisdom save, which it has a plus zero, so. Really? Really? Oh, shoot. Dang it. Dang it, dang it, dang it. It's just kind of like a little wisp of it just goes into the flask. I'll get it next time, though. Um, well, su uh, that sucks. Um, can I do any bonus actions? Shield of Faith. You know what? I'm going to cast Shield of Faith on myself. It gives me a plus two armor class. I've got a 21 armor class. And that's a bonus action. So I try to suck it up. Cast Shield of Faith on me. Now it is the boss's turn. Um... So this thing says, the first thing it will do is cast Mirror Image. Um, uh, roll 1d8 to determine where he lands. I don't really care where he lands since I'm not like a melee character. I can be in the center and it'll be fine. Okay, so he teleports around the room. But he does cast Mirror Image. I've got to look that up. I think I have to roll. when Anytime I make an attack against him, I think I have to roll. And it has to be a certain... Um, uh, let me read Mirror Image to everybody real quick. So, it says... Three illusionary, three illusionary uh, duplicates of yourself appear in your space until the spell ends. The duplicates move with you and mimic your actions. Blah, blah, blah. Each time a creature targets you with attack... Roll a d20 to determine if the attack hits you or one of the targets of your duplicates. If you have three duplicates, you must roll a six or higher to change the target's attack to a duplicate. With two duplicates, you must roll an eight or higher. With one duplicate, you must roll an 11 or higher. Okay. Uh, okay, and then if the duplicates hit, it's destroyed. All right. That's fine. So, I... I don't really even care to track too much which star he's at because I'm pretty much going to just like stand where I am and just uh, try to attack him as much as I can. Um, Steam Mythic, though, is going to... Uh, I guess it would do its Steam Breath since it's like its big thing. So it's going to run up a little bit closer to me, uh, exhale a cone of 15 foot of scalding steam. I have to make a DC 10 dex save. That's That shouldn't be too bad. Oh no! I actually, why'd I jinx it? Why'd I do that? Um, I'll do 1d8 of fire damage. Why would I do, why would I say that? One. Okay, I'll take one point of damage. I know, I'm going to quit saying that kind of stuff. <laughs> uh, my turn. I want this thing... I want this I want this thing out. Um, I don't want to mess with it. So, again, I'm going to say the command word a little bit more authoritative this time. And hope that it really just goes into the thing. It's got to be lower than 17. 16 or lower. 16! Whoa, that's really close, though. All right, uh, so that thing's gonna get sucked on up into that iron flask. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cork that, pop it into my front book bag, um, and just maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll be able to use it eventually. Um, that's really all I can do. 
Uh, so I will let the other, the boss now do something. Alright, what can this person do? So he's teleporting around the room for free, and he's got mirror images on. So other than that, what can he do for attacks? <laughs> he can do Eldritch Blast. Uh, he would probably do Eldritch Blast. I mean, that's what warlocks do, right? Um, where are his spells at? Do you guys see his spells? Oh, it says it right there. Hellish Rebuke, Hex, Witch Bolt. Um, I mean, he could do Witch Bolt. We'll have him do Witch Bolt on me, because I think that does a little bit more damage than Eldritch Blast. Let me look up Witch Bolt. Witch Bolt is a range attack spell, so... Um, oh, so he's going to have to beat a 21 with a plus 5. Good luck. Why did I say that? Danny, you just told me not to say that, and I said it. Okay, 3 plus 5 and 8. Uh, yeah, it hits just against my shimmering shield, just white, uh, like a white facade just covers my whole body and just knocks it aside. Now... I'm ready to hit this thing. Uh, you know what? If if you all haven't watched the last two of this series, um, I always really got tore up leading all the way up to the boss fight. In both boss fights, I had like zero problem. I think it's going to be like that again because what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast Shatter on the the Shahir and the three mirror images. So, I'm going to go ahead and roll the damage. Actually, you know what? No, I'm not. I'm going to use my, my point. And max out the damage of 3d8. So 8, 16, 24. 24 points of damage. What they have to do is con 13 saves. The one thing I'm not sure about is uh, mirror image. Uh, if an attack hits a duplicate, the duplicate is destroyed. I think all... You all correct me if I'm wrong. I think all of them are going to get destroyed. Because this is something that does damage even if they succeed. So I think they would all just like pop out of existence because they're going to take any points of damage. Even if they fail, they're going to take some damage. And it says if this thing is hit, it's destroyed. Now you all tell me if I'm like getting too loosey-goosey with the rules for this, but... I would rather just have him make a, a saving throw instead of have to make like four saving throws and decide like which ones are real, which ones aren't real. Yeah, and it says in like mirror image, they're like all right up on each other. And like that's the whole thing about it. You can't really like tell. All right. So I will have him make a con saving throw, but I think his con is pretty good, actually. Plus two. All right. Plus two. But <laughs> so look. This is where I feel bad, because this thing only has 19 HP. If it, if it fails this... Yeah, yeah, no matter what, like... No matter what, the Shahir is going to get hit by this, and will have his own saving throw, because, like, the others can't take the hits for it. Um... I think he's going to die, because if... All right... If he gets lower than a 13, he's going to get one shot again. And I kind of feel bad about that. But let's see. He might save. He might save. Whoa, he did save by one. So he'll take 12 points of damage, and now he's got 7 HP. It's just, just loud, shattering noise. Explodes all of the mirrored images and some of the uh, rubble from uh, above him is like collapsing to the floor around him. 
Now. What does this, what does this motherfucker do? What is he gonna do? What's gonna look? I'm trying to look at like his best stuff he can do. Um. I mean, I think Eldritch Blast, which bolt obviously failed last time. Uh, let me make sure I'm not like missing any other tactics or anything. Um, oh, uh, so when he does get to hit with a spell, oh, that would suck if he's able to hit me. I can re-roll the damage for a spell up to three damage dice. Ooh, so if it's like a uh, whoever gets hit first is gonna die kind of fight. I don't like that. All right, I'll have him do the warlock thing, and cast Eldritch Blast. Uh, and his to hit is. It's plus five, and I got 21 armor class. Good luck. Why'd I say that, Danny? An 11. He shoots, you know, the Warlock spell. Eldritch Blast. Again, hits against my shield. Alright, so... I can't do the max damage again. He's only got 7 HP, everybody. What is the most surefire way for me to kill this guy? Is it shatter again? I'm getting very, very lucky and I'm very happy. I think the best case scenario is to cast shatter again. Even if he saves, it's still half of 3d8. Half of 3d8 should be at least seven damage, I would think. Do you guys agree? Yeah, all right. I'm gonna do shatter. So he's got to make a con save 13. His constitution is a plus, uh, plus two. Okay. Damn it. All right. So I've got to roll. I'm gonna roll 3d8. If it's at least 14, he will die because he's gonna take half of it. Oh, I am getting so lucky tonight. Oh, so, so lucky. Nice. Death, if you defeated him, go to death to the tyrant. Let's read it. With your final attack shaking this entire temple, the Shahir falls back, writhing in agony. Though he raises his hand in an attempt to use a spell, he lacks the strength to cast it. Looking to you hatefully, the Shahir scor uh, Scourge of the Isl Islands of the Utter South falls back onto the floor of his undersea fortress, dead. His power spent, his reign of terror over. Wasting no time, you swim up through the tower's floors toward the surface. You feel strangely reborn as your lungs adjust to the f breathing of air again. Reaching the shore, you see Elysia leaping with joy on the deck of the sandbuck. Her broad, sincere smile buoys you. Bo uh, buoy? Yeah, buoys you, I guess. Uh, your rare spirit. Uh, her unabashed ecstasy makes you suddenly realize what has truly been achieved. You've gained freedom for the people of these islands, both those who live above and below the waves. You no longer leap. Uh, you. No sooner leap from the rowboat uh, onto the deck than Elysia embraces you, tears of joy uh, shimmering in her eyes. Oh, chosen one of fate, I knew your victory were f was foretold. Let us sail back to the council and begin a great celebration of freedom. Overjoyed, you can uh, scarcely contain your emotions as finally you succumb. It is true you have succeeded. Walking across the deck, you take hold of the tiller and watch the sails fill. Sending you skipping home across the waves. 
Elysia insists you tell and retell the story of your battles in the Tower of the Black Star. Taking careful note of each detail, she grows weary of the tale. Okay, well, fuck you. <laughs> she grows... Oh, she never grows weary of the tale. I thought she was getting tired of me telling this tale <laughs> while she was asking for it. Okay, that makes more sense. Um, reaching the island of the council at last, you are both greeted as returning champions. The people have been looking, hopefully, for uh, your yellow sails on the horizon, and seeing them this day was like witnessing the dawn. Throngs of people gather in celebration on the shore, cheering, dancing, singing, celebrating, uh, singing songs of freedom. During the many feasts filling the next ten days, the people insist you keep the magical rings they gave you. Everyone asks that you consider staying here as guardian of the islands of the Utter South. Sitting at a grand fire, you feast with many new friends and admirers. Elysia leans over and whispers, When these celebrations are over, you must come with me beneath the waves. There is still more celebration and storytelling ahead. I can hardly wait to bring you to my home, my people. Shrugging, you laugh yourself thinking that things could be a lot worse. Fate has truly smiled upon you. Whoa, everybody. We did it. You all did it. Stay here and do our dirty work forever. Oh, everybody, that was... The Shipwrecked Trilogy. So, um, real quick, if you're still watching, then uh, next week I will be picking up another one-shot um, or solo adventure. There's a lot on DM's Guild. There's some that are meant to be, like, short, short-ish standalone adventures like this one. Uh, like, all three of these were. All three of these, I knocked them all out within, um, I mean, within, like, two hours every time I was able to finish them. And that's more considered a short uh, solo adventure is when it's in, in that two hour range. And um, there are definitely some that are like, I mean, they're as long as like an average D&D &D session where they're like four to six hours long. Um, if I pick one of those next time, uh, then on next Thursday, I'll still start at 730. And then when it gets close to 10, I'll try to find a good wrap up spot. And then I'll just continue that one on the following week. Or if I pick another short one, I'll try to knock it out in one session, just like tonight. So um, make sure if you're not, definitely go and subscribe to this channel so that you get notified every time uh, we go live. Um, oh, Randall, I didn't know that you... Which ones do you write, Randall? Uh, let, let me know in here real quick. Um, I didn't know that you actually wrote uh, Solo Adventures. Eight Petals, Agent, Argent. All right, cool. I'll check that out. Um, yeah, I, uh, I'm in that Facebook group, the Solo Dungeons and uh, Dungeons and Dragons Solo Adventures, whatever it's called. But um, I don't write any, um, so I didn't. I didn't know that you. Uh, I thought that maybe you also didn't write any. You were just like, um, you know, like me in there, just kind of to stay up to date on this solo adventure. So I will check that out. Uh, Oh, awesome. That is really cool. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll check them out. Like I said, this is a... Um, this is a... Uh, oh, there we go. Is that is that you? Blaze. Are you Gamer Guy? Oh, okay. Well, I didn't know that I had the author of this adventure watching while we were playing. Jeez. That's awesome. Uh, I had a lot of fun with this trilogy. I really did. Um, and and yeah, I this this series is going to be uh, continuing on. Like it's it's it doesn't have an end for this one, so it's going to be just until I run out of solo adventures, I guess. Um, so tune in every week for this one, same time. Um, yeah, Nick. Like I said, now that I'm done with this, I will probably roll up a new character and. I like it because now, as a forever D and D, I will be able to now like test out all of the different classes that I've never got to uh, play before. I have got to play a clerics a couple times, and they're kind of my one of my favorites, so that's why I was a cleric this time. But I will not be a cleric next time. I'll change it up. I promise. And I won't be a turtle either. Um, so yeah, tune in. Uh, g uh, make sure that you follow this channel if you're not you can subscribe to this channel for free if you've got amazon prime if you got amazon prime you get one free twitch subscription every single month 
you do have to change it every month, which is kind of annoying. Like, if you if it laps, lapses the next month, you have to manually remember to go on and use your subscription again, which is kind of annoying. But if you use your Amazon Prime subscription for this channel, you get some cool emotes. And the more subscribers we get, the more emotes we can add. And we've got a lot ready. We just need more subscribers to add more. And we get like a couple bucks every month get back to us, like half of whatever the subscription usually is. Like we get like $2 a subscription or something like that. Um, so yeah, uh, make sure you follow us. This Speaking of following this channel, next uh, this Saturday, we will be starting a brand new show called Shitty Cowboys. And uh, Shitty Cowboys is going to be a Wild West D&D &D adventure using the Wranglers of West Hollow. Um uh, setting by Alex Klippinger and PB Publishing. Very, very excited for that. Uh, starting this Saturday, and it's just a two-person. It's me as a DM, and then two other people, two other cowboys, uh, Jirundu and Sean, uh, will be playing. So we're really excited for that. And, uh, yeah, uh, make sure you follow us wherever. If you're not, uh, subscribe to all of our podcasts. Um, we... I have started up a, a podcast network recently, like within the last month or so, uh, called Majestic Goose. And on that podcast or network, we have um, Roll for Weird. It's a Monster of the Week, bi-weekly podcast, Half of Heroes, bi-weekly Dungeons and Dragons podcast, One Shot Onslaught, uh, where we play Dungeons and uh, DMs Guild Adventures, um, bi-weekly podcast. And then Dice Talk is a kind of an interview style um, uh, tabletop uh, show that is also going to be bi-weekly. It's going to have new episodes coming out very soon. I think this month, August, maybe. Um, if not, then definitely September, I would think. So go subscribe to all the shows. Leave us all those five-star rating reviews. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Very excited to uh, pick up a new trilogy or new series um, next Thursday. So... Uh, we'll see which one we land on, um, and and yeah, I'm going to go ahead and end it there. I've got another recording of a podcast I'm on called Gullible Gazette in like 30 minutes now, um, and that's like a comedy podcast, so that's not on the network because the network's about tabletop, uh, tabletop shows. So uh, yeah, again, thank you all for watching. Talk to you all in a little bit. Uh, hey, join our Discord. Um, everybody, right now, if you're watching this, seriously, go join our Discord, Bit dot l y slash one shot discord uh we all hang out there daily and i'm gonna post the link real quick uh we we hang out there just like i'm in there if, if i'm awake i'm in there and you can get a hold of me and no i'm i'm chatting in there all day and all of us are so um go join that discord and uh with that i will talk to y'all later bye everybody